Hello, everyone. My guests today are Suja and Sri Kama, the co-founders of Funnel AI. Suja is a zealous strategic leader and design thinker by profession and passion. Sri is robotics and AI specialist by profession and passion who want to be a front runner in creating novel and efficient solutions. Both of them are strong advocates for futuristic technologies and technology adoption for efficient solutions. And both believe that bold moves and mindset change may not always go our way, but are critical behaviors for success. Now building Funnel AI. Suja, Sri, you ready to take us to the top? Sure. All right. Very good. So, Suja, maybe kick us off. What does Funnel AI do and how do you guys make money? What's the business model? So, Funnel AI is a revolutionary customer acquisition tool. So, what we do is we find the customers who are looking for a service or a product right now. We don't do predictive analytics, not when people are thinking about it or uh, browsing about it, when people really need a product or a service. We use AI algorithms to um, piece out the, and then find the customers and then show it to the businesses that the, the customers are looking for. Okay. And pricing wise, I mean, are we talking enterprise, mid-market or SMB you're targeting? What are customers paying on average per year, would you say? So we are a B2B a SaaS model uh, and our order dealerships spare anywhere between $2,000 to $5,000 a month. A what? Uh, they pay about $2,000 to $5,000 a month. It's a, B2B. Um, a month. Got it. Good. Okay. And now I assume you have enterprise at 5,000 and maybe a long tail at 2,000, but would you say a fair average is about 2,000 a month, something like that? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Put this on a timeline for me, guys. When did you launch? Uh, June 2017. 2017. And I mean, where were, I was going to say, where were you guys at? Like what was happening in 2017? Um, so we joined an accelerator called Realco here in San Antonio. Uh, so I'm from Austin. My sister, Suja, came from Calgary. Uh, we were just starting off in June and we joined Accelerator here in San Antonio. So in 2017, what we were doing is uh, Shri got this idea uh, to look for the customers uh, for his previous startup called Atmosphere, which is um, a CRM tool similar to Salesforce, but in much more low-key, small-scale um, app. And uh, so we were ideating uh, just about June, July, and then we got so much feedback from the investors at that rather than just focusing on the CRM idea, maybe focusing on funnel AI idea would be great. So we thought about it. We moved to, she moved to San Antonio, and I started helping him with his business on the operation strategy side of things. We raised a small seed fund the early how, how much? How much total raised? We raised just about one point nine million. Okay, on a on a note or a price to equity round. Uh, so the first three seventy five was on a pri uh, equity round, but then uh, one point five was uh, on a price round. Well, equity and price are the same thing. Did you mean the first three seventy five was debt and the second was equity? That is right. Convertible yeah. note. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Okay. Very good. And then okay. Good. So one point nine into the company to date. You launched in twenty seventeen. And how many customers have you scaled to today? So we have 84 paying customers right now. Okay. And the first, you know, two are the hardest, right? How'd you guys get the first two customers? So uh, being in the background, so we went with auto dealerships and I used to be part of the communities and I used to be a car guy. And so I realized that communities are talking about looking to buy a new or used car. So that's how we harness that community sites first to understand the real time intent. And I walked into the dealership that I knew and, and told them how we could connect them with real-time customers. So you, walked, you just walked in cold to a car dealer that you kind of knew because you were in the space? That is correct, yes. Okay, I mean, what'd you tell them? So I told them how uh, they can connect with community members much quicker in real time. And if they were actually doing anything like that, and the answer was no, and when I showed them the demo, it was clear that how they could connect with uh, prospective customers in real time. Yeah, so one of the questions we asked is how much do you spend in marketing and sales and how are you reaching out to your customers? And most of the response is we are spending anywhere between 80,000 to 100 K a month. And the reaching out to the response is through lead gen companies or passive through emails, cold calling, or sending them campaigns and events, notifications. So Shri said, by the way, everyone on car forums and also on social media sites are actually asking about so-and-so model and then so-and-so color. Do you actually have staff to look at these? And then the GM's response was, no, we never, we don't have time to sit down and then scroll through social media sites or also the social platforms trying to look for you know, customers who 
you need a product now. And Got it. it. So did you sell, was that first sale at 2000 bucks a month? You convinced them to spend right on the spot two grand a month for this? And so we initially started with like a thousand dollars trial because- I That's still pretty good though. For a company where you're convincing them to totally miss, you know, redirect their ad spend, that's pretty good. All right, so 84 customers today, 2,000 bucks a month minimum. You're doing north of $168,000 a month right now? That is correct, yes. And, and where were you guys a year ago? A uh, year ago, we were just about 50K MRR. Okay, so kind of 3X year over year. Obviously, small numbers, but still something you should brag about, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is most of that growth coming from expanding old customers, getting them to pay you more, or landing new customers altogether? We actually landed new customers. Um, so it's all about organic growth. So founders, we sold the product uh, and then uh, we grow organic. So and what? Growth from the existing customers. Exactly. What, so what is, uh, uh, Sujo, what is kind of expansion revenue year over year? Just ignore new customer additions. Just how much you expand old cohorts by? 30%? 30-ish. Yeah. It's, back, it's back of the napkin. By the way, very few people actually measure this hardcore. It's usually back of the napkin. But if you generally think you take someone from a $24,000 ACV, right, yeah. up to a $30,000 ACV, so two grand a month up to three or four grand a month, yeah, you got about 30, you know, 30, 30, 40% expansion. All right. And what about churn? Why don't you fill that out for us? What's your revenue churn on that same cohort annually? So right now, uh, with order dealerships, we don't have any churn. Um, and initially, when we first started, we did try with like fitness company or a real estate company. But those are the ones that we couldn't build AI models. Uh, I know we wanted to focus on auto. So we, from the auto perspective, we don't have any children. Right okay, so, but if you look at your entire, like a year ago, the entire customer base you had, so include everyone. I know some of them churn because they were customers you didn't want. I'm asking you to quantify that. So are we talking 10% churn, 30% churn or more? Uh, even uh, less than 10% actually. Okay, so 10% churn on the cohort, 30% expansion, net revenue retention, 120. Yeah, exactly. Suja, is that right? Yes. See, I love it's it when there's two people because then I, I, can play you guys, I can play you off each other. I, I was looking at Sri and then I was just like, you know, do we call it a churn when we strategically made a decision that we are not going to serve other verticals like real estate and fitness just because we are diluting ourselves and we are not providing any solid solution. Well, yeah, it's churn, but it's intentional. Sure, right? There's voluntary churn. There's yeah. intentional churn, right? And then there's churn that you really didn't want to churn, right? They were the right, kind of right customer churn. So this happens all the time, by the way, when people move up market, right? They churn off a ton of lower paying customers as, the, as they go up market, which is fine. But the, the trick is logo churn will be high, but revenue churn should actually be very low because the, the price points are so much higher where they're moving. That's right, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. On a pricing model, we are uh, we're building more from the feedback that we got. We're actually building other modules, uh, products, and expansion for them. So our pricing point per month will also increase as well for going forward for new customers. That's okay. good. What's your guys' team size today? Uh, we are 10 right now. Okay, 10. And are you guys still burning capital, investing in growth, or are you cash flow positive? So we've been cash flow positive since uh, November of last year. Okay, what, so this 1.9 million just sit in your bank or what? Yes, it is. <laughs> exactly. You guys go on family vacations, you buy extra, extra, you know, pina coladas because you get extra money? We are looking to become investors. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so in all seriousness, you still have a, what, one five in the bank, something like that? We have 1.9 in the bank. That's great. Okay, good. So, so profitable today. Now, are you taking, are we talking like 10% of the bottom line monthly, 20% or break even? Uh, we are uh, taking about 10% uh, more uh, like profit. Okay, that's good. That's good. So 10% profit, uh, which is great. Um, how are you driving growth? So like when you look at adding new customers, what's your guys' fully weighted CAC to get a new customer paying two grand a month? So today we've been doing outbound uh, right now. So we just started doing outbound. We got referrals from existing customers. We do get that as well. But now we're doing more on the outbound. Uh, we also started getting inbound as well. Yeah, we also go to events and then uh, we intentionally participate in pitch events, um, even though we don't need the money, just to make sure like we have that relationship building with the OEMs and uh, bigger financial uh, institutions. So they actually love our product and then they come back to become our potential customers. So what do you, what do you think the fully weighted CAC is to get a new $2,000 a month customer? What are you, what are you spending fully weighted? Um, today, I mean, I think from our perspective, um, less than hundred dollars. Um, we 
If that, that includes all the marketing, all, all sales people, all events, uh, any time, any direct paid Facebook spend, you're spending $100 to get a new $2,000 a month customer? Yeah, exactly. we don't do any digital ads at all. Um, yes, and then the most of the marketing is through our blogs or through our publications. Yeah, yeah, but th- that all costs, I mean, that you have a, someone that's doing the writing, there's a salary there. I just want to make sure I'm getting this right. Fully weighted, you think it's $100 to get a $2,000 a month customer? Uh, so for us, the, we, are, we are the one, the founders been doing that, right? I think we take a very minimum salary. Well, you so, just valued your time at about zero then. We are yeah. actually building the sales team going forward. So that's, that's in a pipeline to do, right? Okay. Now. So it's, it's up in the air. The biggest kind of CAC right now is your two's time, right? So we could take your two salaries, right? Divided by number of new customers per year and back into that. But that's the biggest expense right now. That is yeah. correct, yes. Okay. Let me ask you a different question. Um, hypothetically, how aggressive would you be on spending to get new customers? Would you go up to a 12 month payback or 24 months? Uh, so we would go, I mean, uh, since our pricing point, uh, based on that, we could spend at least one month of the revenue in, in a while if you want to get it right. I think, uh, we haven't done anything on the, um, uh, kind of like conferences. So those are the things we wanted to spend now. Uh, five to ten grand on conferences starting uh, next month. Um, but Shereen, is so even adding, even in sending two grand to get a two thousand dollar month customer, your payback period is one month. I mean, for a, a venture back SaaS company, usually a board would not be satisfied with that. They'd want you spending. That is, those economics are so good. They'd want you spending more in those channels to drive faster growth. That's how the board meeting would sound. Absolutely, yeah. That's that was a conversation we had. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, how do you hold them back, right? I mean, and this is going to sound so horrible, but once you're on the VC track, you're on it. The worst thing you can do is hold their cash because then your board meetings get contentious a little bit, right? They're going, why the hell aren't you investing the money? I shouldn't have given you the money in the first place. Give it, and then they start thinking, yeah, maybe I should just take it back. They never do that, but that's what they think. How do you tell them, be patient, be patient, just relax? So for us, I think uh, right now that is the emphasis on building the sales team. So we. So how do we tell them? The first thing is about finding the right person, the right culture, and the right fit. I think that's very, very important for us. And then the second one is who has this technical background and also this personable uh, behavioral science side of things where they can really understand the customer. And I think the third thing I think we are looking for when we are trying to hire hire salespeople is like they need to be customer centric. We want to be a customer-centric product. So we have quite a few people in the pipeline, and then we do show a pipeline as to how many people we are interviewing, what is our plan going forward. So that- But you don't have a good pro forma built out for a salesperson. In other words, do you know what you want their quota attainment to be relative to their fully weighted comp for a year? Is it 5X, 10X? How profitable do you want? We do. Yeah, we do have that. So right now, uh, we, have, we know the quotas we want to set. We want to know the compensation plans we have. Um, and then I think right now we're also looking at hiring that and building that team for us. Yeah, but let's say you're in San Antonio. Okay, I'm in Austin. So I've been in San Antonio a bunch. I've worked with Geekdom, Active Capital, all those folks, right? So in San Antonio, you probably get a salesperson, right? Call it a 50K base with another 30K of kind of commission on top of that. If they do full quota attainment, let's say it's 80K a year, fully weighted comp, you're going to set their ARR target in terms of new closed deals annually, hopefully at something like 450 a year, 5X the fully weighted Again, salary at 80K. What I'm asking is, are you using 5X? Is that what your projections say? Or is it more like 10X or 2X or 7X? I think we have more than 5X. We so, 10X. Yeah, we are 10X right now. Okay, 10X. So you're, you basically have quota attainment at more like 800 grand a new ARR for a salesperson that's earning fully weighted comp of 80K? That is correct, yes. Got it. And, and if you, again, if you're selling uh, plans, right, at $24,000 ACVs or two grand a month, right, that basically means they need to be closing th- you know, 33 deals a year, basically. That's right. Do you feel like you have pipeline for that? Yes, we do. Uh, okay. We do have all uh, the big pipeline for us right now. Yes. Very cool. All right, let's wrap up with the famous five. Sri, this one for you. Favorite business book? Um, <laughs> Auto, autobiography by Steve Jobs. <laughs> Number two, Suja, for you. Favorite CEO? Um, favorite CEO? Um, oh, I love uh, Tony Hirsch from um, Zappos. Uh, number three, Shri, favorite online tool you use for building the business? Um, Slack. All right, uh, Suja, back to you. How many hours of sleep you get every night? Six. All right, and then Suja, uh, Shri, let's wrap up with you. Uh, situation, married, single, kids? Uh, single. 
Okay, no kiddos running around? No kids running out. So. <laughs> Suja, Suja, does he have any kids running around we don't know about? I have a 16 year old, so she's not running around. But <laughs> All right. Kids. And, and Sri, how old are you? Uh, 39. Last <laughs> question What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Um, I could probably want to become an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> start up faster guys there you have it funnel ai they're doing about one hundred sixty thousand dollars per month right now in revenue serving 84 customers spending a minimum two thousand dollars per month they've got 1.9 million bucks of cash in the bank because they're profitable about six thousand dollars in profit every month that's about 10 percent ebitda margin churning 10 percent of their customer base but expanding 30 percent for 120 percent net revenue retention spending up to two grand and worst cases right to get a new customer so one month payback they're looking to figure out how to scale that so they can actually again scale sales team scale their ar over time. So just Sri, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you thanks, so much, Nathan. Nathan. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.